A couple of days ago, the EU designated Apple's iPad OS as a gatekeeper under their Digital Markets Act. And Apple has been given six months to ensure that iPad OS has full compliance with DMA obligations if Apple wants to continue selling their iPads in the EU market, which of course they do because just like in the smartphone market, Apple is very dominant in the tablet market, both globally and in the EU specifically. And I think this has become even more true with the iPad Pros that are using the ARM chips because those are much more of a workhorse tablet. Uh, they're more similar really to the Microsoft Surface just in terms of raw power under the hood, but they have an even better battery life than the Surface because of that really power efficient ARM architecture. And I would also say that iPads have a better user interface than the Surface because Windows is extra trashy on mobile. They just always have been. But anyway, if someone were to buy one of these tablets, like one of these thousand dollar plus tablets, regardless of who the manufacturer is, you would expect for that tablet to be able to handle the same workloads as a traditional laptop, more or less. But that's not really what you get with iPads. You see, the real problem with the iPad Pros, besides non-removable storage, which really is just a problem with Apple's entire product line at this point, like even the newer MacBooks don't have removable storage anymore. Uh, but anyway, on the iPads, there's a lack of desktop or laptop level applications available to you because you're forced to go through Apple's App Store. Apple didn't even have something similar to compete with Samsung's DeX, like to let you dock your like Galaxy phone or Galaxy tablet in the Samsung ecosystem and then use it like a desktop. The iPads didn't have anything like that until iPadOS 16 came out with the latest generation of iPads where you use, I think they call it Stage Manager. Um, and the whole reason that Apple does this, like this is a calculated move, the reason they do this is to not step on their own toes with the MacBook product line, more specifically the MacBook Air product line. These pro-level flagship tablets, the whole reason for buying them is to blur the lines between what a laptop and a tablet are. That's the whole reason that Samsung started doing DeX on their flagship devices. If you wanted a tablet that was just for entertainment purposes, like just a big screen to watch video on, then you don't gotta spend a lot of money to get that. Like you can, watch HD video with a fairly low powered device. Um, you can even do gaming, especially if we're talking about cloud stream gaming, where you're basically just connecting to some remote server that's actually doing the heavy lifting and graphics processing, and then just sending that video feed back to you. And you know, you're sending commands back to move your character around. Um, again, that works fine on cheap tablets. But if you're gonna spend $1,000 or more on a tablet, you would expect it to perform like a similarly priced laptop that also has touchscreen and stylus integration, uh, which honestly, the importance of varies depending on the workload. Like a lot of people that I know that have really expensive tablets like this, um, you know, Surfaces or iPad Pros, don't even use the touchscreen, they just, attach a keyboard to it, use it like a fancy laptop and call it a day. For those people, the MacBook Air and the iPad Pro are pretty much the same device. So Apple creates this arbitrary limitation in the iPad by forcing you to use their operating system on it, iPad OS, which is basically the same as iOS, and has the same app store that you have on the iPhone, which downgrades the whole device experience to being more like having a large iPhone 
instead of an extremely portable MacBook Air with touchscreen and stylus capabilities. Apple has already been made to comply with DMA regulations in iOS by allowing EU customers to sideload apps, which really just means installing the applications you want the way that you want to. You're allowed to use alternate stores within EU iOS now, alternate app stores, and you're able to use third-party browser engines. So iOS within the EU is becoming more similar to the types of freedom that you would have within the Android ecosystem. And while iPhones and Android phones are more neck and neck in terms of performance and capabilities, I feel like it's not even close with the latest iPad Pros, I think M2 iPad Pros is the chips that they have, and literally any other Android tablet in terms of raw performance. But the locked down software on the iPad means only certain workloads are really able to take advantage of that raw performance. More stylistic workloads, drawing, possibly some light video editing, stuff like that. Um, for example, on Android, you could do a lot more technical workloads and, and also gaming on Android because there's so much more emulation software that's available on Android. Uh, it's even possible to run Linux and Windows virtual machines on Android. So, you know, of course, they're not very performant. They're not as performant as you would expect to get on a desktop or laptop. Um, and of course, any mobile device isn't going to be as performant with heavy duty workloads, you know, virtualization uh, and stuff like that. But then that's where cloud computing comes in for handling the heavier workloads. I mean, that's kind of to be expected if you're purchasing a device like this that doesn't have as much under the hood power as a high performance laptop or certainly a desktop. And when I say cloud computing, it doesn't always have to be that traditional cloud that we think of where you're using some other guy's computer somewhere else on the internet and you know he ultimately controls your data and what you can do. No. If these devices don't restrict you, then you can connect to local machines that you own and you control to offload a rendering or compiling workload to, or do the heavy lifting of running virtual machines, and then you can just use your tablet as an interface for interacting with that VM. I really think that tablet hardware has caught up at this point to allow them to be the ultimate thin clients. It's just a matter of the companies that make these high-end tablets to not reduce the device's capabilities with gatekeeper software, to not restrict what you're able to do with these digital locks. But what are your thoughts? Will iPads become more practical if iPadOS gets forcefully opened up by EU regulations, or is Apple just gonna find some other way to reduce their functionality and to just barely comply with the EU regulations in order to keep up their MacBook sales? Let me know in the comments below, and check out my website, based.win, for awesome merch like the Come and Find a T-shirt, Little Damon hoodie, or Libre Sleeveless Tee. 10% discount for paying in Monero XMR at checkout. Have a great rest of your day.